on 9-11, myself, my husband, and the entire cast of Everybody Loves Raymond and their spouses and all the writers and their spouses had just flown in to New York City um, the evening of 9-10. Uh, very excited to be coming in um, because our show was going into syndication and it was a big celebration and that's why all the families had come. Uh, One of our producers uh, had never been to New York City before so this was going to be her first trip and the night we flew in on um, September 10th was the most gorgeous clear night and the city was just sparkling as we descended you know into the airport and um, it was really very exciting and a very kind of joyful time for all of us. The The next morning after we arrived uh, I had to get up very early to get into hair and makeup. It takes forever to uh, look like this. There's a picture of Dorian Gray that uh, uh, is me off camera before hair and makeup. But anyway, Um, so my husband was still asleep and I had been in hair and makeup for many hours and we're finally ready and go down into the lobby and as we're uh, sort of gathering and waiting for our uh, cars to take us to Rockefeller Center to do the Rosie O'Donnell show, um, the doorman said a plane flew into the World Trade Center and I said that's really strange and what a horrible accident and literally a few minutes later another doorman came and said another plane just flew into the World Trade Center and I remember saying to him well that's not an accident then one plane is an accident two planes is is a planned event and so nobody knew what to make of it and we all got into the car And, of course, everyone was talking about it. We were all in this big limo together. And we all started getting on our cell phones, and we're heading toward Rockefeller Center. And um, there was no Twitter then, so you didn't get that immediate of a news response. But we start calling family, and uh, we're in the limousine, the whole cast together, going over to the Rosie O'Donnell show at Rockefeller Center. And we notice people starting to come out of the buildings midtown and everybody's on cell phones and and now nobody can get cell phone reception because it's either overloaded or it's been cut off and um, I I believe you could see down if you look downtown you could start seeing smoke come up and we got a few blocks and then we got the call that Rockefeller Center is being evacuated and everybody go back to the hotel and I um, got back to the hotel and went up to the room and my husband was still asleep and I was pounding on the door and he got up and I said D- 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 turn the TV on you have to something something's happened at the World Trade Center and we turned it on and we saw you know the cameras were down there we saw the smoke and the flames and then another news story came in that the Pentagon had been hit and it just kept coming and, and it was unbelievable and um, it was just, it, it was, I don't even know how to, de- to describe it. Um, to be in New York City when all that's happening was pretty intense. Our kids were all back in L.A. And I knew that we were under attack. I mean, that felt like the United States was under attack. And it was just surreal. It was very hard to comprehend, actually. My reaction was a little odd, I think, because I I felt very calm. I I think this sounds weird, but I'm always um, aware that today could be my last day. And when this started happening, I thought, oh, this is it, huh? I never thought it would be in New York City with in this way. Um, but I was kind of calm about it. Sort of, there was just sort of an acceptance of, okay, here we are. Let's see what's going to happen. Um, we had gotten a hold of uh, everybody at home and said, make sure the kids stay inside. We don't. Nobody knows what this is about. Um, 
I think the airspace had been shut down um, over New York, and so it was oddly quiet in a way. And we just had to sit in the room. Everybody started gathering. I think it was maybe in Phil's room. And he ordered up a bunch of food, and we just watched uh, the buildings come down and all these different reports. And there were some people who were started, you know, sort of being upset and crying and and just kind of freaked out. I felt very, I just felt calm. I just thought, I didn't think this is how it would end, but this is a really interesting way to go. We, 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 uh, we were a very, and are a very close-knit group of people, and we all have families. We we're sort of on the older side, um, so we all had pretty established families, and, and um, you know, I think even for a group of comedians, there wasn't a lot of joking. There was a lot of calling around, finding out, um, are we going to be able to leave New York? Is it safe to go? Should we be driving across country? Are there, you know, we couldn't fly out. You know, what were we going to do? Calling back and making sure our families were safe. Um, trying to get news from other people around the country, if anybody heard anything else going on. So really it was, it was a, a pretty serious um, feeling and sort of a waiting and watching and just hanging on every new little bit of, of news. Um, I felt an urge really, I, I would have loved to have kind of gone down there to see what was going on. I, I sort of have that personality that I wanted to be right where everything was happening. But um, I think when you're a mom, you can't do that kind of thing anymore. You have to think about taking care of yourself for your family. Um, I think, you know, the sort of humor um, amongst the group came out later that night when we all went to dinner together. And uh, Ray had gone for a walk and had uh, Ray and I think his manager Rory had gone for a walk and met a guy who had wandered up from the World Trade Center covered in ash uh, who was trying to figure out how to get back to Brooklyn or New Jersey. I can't remember where he was from. And they befriended him and they brought him to dinner that night. And there was this whole sort of wonderful camaraderie for all of us. And we just felt great that we could celebrate with somebody who had made it out of there. And it gave us, I think everybody was just looking for some kind of outlet of hopefulness or some one little tiny good thing that could come out of it that we could be a part of. And, you know, I'm sure, I can't even remember his name, but I'm sure he was just stunned that he's just gone through this and now he's sitting at dinner with the cast of Everybody Loves Raymond and everybody's sort of joking and joshing about it. And um, and I just remember everyone was kind of being silly because I think you're just trying, it, it was so overwhelming, the tragedy of it and the scope of human loss that we're kind of clinging to each other and feeling a sense of gratitude about having our lives, being safe, our families are safe, um, and we're going to be okay and everything's going to be okay. And I think there's also that kind of rallying that Americans are so great at of when something of that magnitude comes along that we are not going to let it defeat us, that we have a certain kind of spirit and energy and uh, positive outlook that we are going to surmount this and we are going to rise above this and we are going to be better for it. We went through um, a lot of um, different scenarios of how to get back and you know Ray is bad on an airplane under the best of circumstances. He's, uh, he's always you know feeling his pulse and looking you know timing it and if there's any um, you know uh, turbulence. He, he gets very, very nervous about it. Um, so when this situation came up, he really did not want to be in the sky. And I understood too. I thought, what if you, God forbid, something happens and someone mistakes your plane for some enemy thing and you're all blown up in the sky, whatever. So they brought this bus along that 
they said we could uh, all get on this bus and drive across country back to uh, Los Angeles. And I got on this bus, and I guess it was some kind of tour bus for a band or something, but it actually looked like the bus that the equipment, the band equipment would be in because there were no windows. It was, and it was sort of a bench seat on either side and no windows. That's what I remember about it. And I just, I felt just sitting in it for five minutes, I felt really claustrophobic and uncomfortable. And I said to Ray and Brad, there's no way I'm spending five days in this bus. I'll take my chances. I'll either stay in New York until it, you know, everything settles down, or if they can get me out in the next few days, I'll go. Um, and so I, I, you know, got on this plane. Uh, HBO was one of our producers, so they got a plane for us, and they put a bunch of people on. There were people from all different shows on. Um, and it was a small plane. We had to land and refuel somewhere in the west before we got to L.A. And I remember calling Ray, and he's on the bus with Brad. And they got two drivers um, for the bus to take shifts so that they could drive straight through. And they were, you know, they'd only gone a few hours and they were already tearing their hair out. And I'm like, I'm almost home. You really should have come on the plane. And by the way, I've had a lovely conversation with Mike Binder. He's a great guy, meeting all kinds of people. You really should have come on the plane. Um, and, um, and apparently one of the bus drivers was just a great, 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 great fan of Ray and Brad and could not stop talking to them for, you know, 15 hours of, of driving. Just wanted to know everything about them and tell them everything about himself. And it just sounded like a total nightmare. Um, and I, I couldn't help rubbing it in with to Ray when I called him from, we were refueling and just saying, you know, oh, I'm just, you know, getting some candy from the snack machine, then we're getting back on the plane. <laughs> we're going to be in LA in about 15 minutes. Um, so, um, you're, you're very cruel. I didn't know that. I really, I like to give Ray stick. Um, so, um, it was, you know, I, I was very thankful. I, I also left my husband behind because we thought we shouldn't be on the same plane together. He'll take the next one out. Um, and so he had another dinner that next night with a, a lot of people that he didn't know very well that all became friends. And, um, you know, I just think there was something about 9-11 that really drew people even closer. On a, on a half-hour comedy, especially a multi-camera, it's very difficult to address big issues, and especially an event like 9-11, and maintain the tone of your show. Mm -hmm. It becomes a very different thing. And... Everybody Loves Raymond was always a show that was never going to have that very special episode. I know that we always joked about, and now a very special episode of Everybody Loves Raymond, you know, when we were going to be discussing this or that. And we, of course, we would never do that. That was the joke, that our show would never go there. And there's no way to deal with the enormity of that event and then be able to go back to a punchline. You just can't do it. So it's, it's better not to go there. You, there's just no way to do it. I, I, I mean, if, if, if I tried to think about how would we work that in? You know, maybe Robert had some buddies at another precinct that were down there that were affected by it. But, but really, where can you go with it? You can't make jokes about it. You know, um, so I guess our role is to give people 30 minutes of a reprieve from their tragedy. I know that so many um, fans have come up to me, and I've gotten this over and over, that, that they've said, you know, during the time that Raymond was on, our family was going through a very difficult time. My father was very sick or something was happening. We were really, we were really struggling. And we so looked forward to Monday nights, to that half an hour where we knew we were just going to be laughing our heads off. I'm going to have to ask you to say it again. Okay. I apologize. That's okay. Me <coughs> too. <laughs> and we're clear. Throughout the years of Raymond, fans would come up to me and say, our family was going through a hard time. My father was really sick, and the only time he laughed 
was when we were watching Everybody Loves Raymond, and so it became very special to us, and we feel such gratitude to you and the show uh, because you brought this relief and this joy in our family when we didn't have much. And so, I, I mean, I think if anything, that's how we contribute to trying to lift people up after 9-11 is just to have 30 minutes of being able to escape um, the reality of what was going on in the country. I think there was the thought that maybe the Emmys wouldn't happen at all and it <clears throat> was up in the air for a long time and they made the decision to do it but in a very downplayed way so I remember that most women did not wear full-out gowns and jewelry and I didn't you know I had just sort of a cocktail length dress and it was just sort of subdued and there I believe Ellen DeGeneres was uh, hosting that year and she came out with a wonderful um, opening line something about that this you know here was this Hollywood lesbian who was hosting this show and it just sort of showed that you know we're still here and these guys who you know we sort of represent everything that that these terrorists hate about us and here we are and we're here and it was very uplifting for everybody and um, she was perfect you know and she just she was really perfect in hitting the right tone of bringing a perspective to it where you could laugh um, but it was still respectful yeah. and um, I just remember being shocked uh, that I had won I didn't really expect that but also feeling a deep gratitude for just being alive and living in this country and being able to do what we love and express whatever we need to we want to express um, freely and that there were also troops now going over there and um, giving their lives to make sure that we could still do what we do and express the, the things we wanted to express. So it was um, a very emotional moment for me. I, it's, it's interesting because our community in Hollywood is um, pretty tight-knit. We have a really, it's a weird industry. We have weird jobs that we do. Um, and so, and, and most of us were sort of the outsiders in our own communities back home. So then you, you know, you come together with all these great people in Hollywood who are creative and funny and um, interesting and crazy and there's never a dull moment and uh, you know this brought us even closer together um, and I think it also brought us closer to the whole country I mean I think it, it brought obviously it brought our country together people were flying flags that normally would never do that and uh, I think it touched everybody very deeply um, I hope we can get back to that point again sometime. <laughs>